Okay, so when you're biking going to the Sun Road, uh, it is May 9th, Mother's Day weekend, absolutely gorgeous. It does get cooler in the park and as you go up, so you might wanna bring some layers. Also remember sunscreen and bring your patience, at least this year anyways, it's 2024. Still road construction going on. We got stopped a couple times for about a half hour each. So just be prepared for that. And then also trying to find the parking up here, but it's gonna be worth it. So a few observations. We really haven't gone that far yet. We really haven't started climbing too much. Um, a few things about the e-bikes though. Chad said that he's noticing the waterfalls a lot more than normal because we aren't working so hard, which is great. Um, I will say we're going faster than normal. So I kind of hate that we're not stopping as much because we don't need to, but then I feel like we're just kind of whizzing through it. Um, but obviously we could stop if we wanted to so and it's absolutely gorgeous day today So we just stopped, had lunch at the Loop. Um, my bike was at 77% battery left. We started at 100, Chad's was at 72. So this is the first year where we are going past the Loop. I don't know how far we can go, um, but obviously we're not tired yet. So we're gonna see what we can see. We've never gone past the loop coming down so high speed. Make sure, kind of the same rule as when you're skiing, you need to be able to stop for anything or anybody that comes out in front of you. Um, but if you are slower, stay to the right as much as you can. It's hard because the rocks shut out there. I got totally splashed up. You can probably see stuff on my glasses from the water kicking up, but it was a blast coming down. So I don't ever wear a helmet going up, um, but I do put one on to come down just because we are going so fast. At the turnaround point, my battery was at 61%, Chad's was at 50. We turned them off to come down to this point and now it's flat again, so we'll turn them back on. So I'll let you know what we end up at. It's just absolutely insane that we get to do this. This is one of my favorite things to do, uh, living here near Glacier National Park. If you can make it happen, you definitely should. Ending, my battery was at 54% and Chad's was at 45%, I think. So we definitely used about 5% to get down that uh, lower level. So save a little bit percent for that. Also, when you're going up, make sure you stay to the right side of the yellow divider line because people do come down going really fast. And also our bikes have a bell on them, which sounds weird, <laughs> like we're grannies or something, but um, it's really helpful for when you want to pass people because sometimes they're not paying attention They're looking around and just to give them a heads up. Hey, somebody's here and we're passing you is perfect So I would allow three to five hours. I think to do it. Maybe six Well, if you're if you don't have an e-bike, you probably won't go as far as we did Although we did see quite a few without e-bikes like up past the loop. So kind of depends on how far you want to go um, Chad would you ever do this again without an e-bike? No. <laughs> it's life changing. <laughs> I mean, it's still like, you can work as hard as you want. Somebody else said, choose your own adventure because you have eco, sport, and turbo mode. Actually, you can turn it off on the bottom. And you could just turn it off. We had it off on the way down. 
until we hit the flat again. Um, but up until the loop, we only used Eco and Sport. And then past the loop, we used Sport Turbo. So that gives you kind of a general idea um, on our battery power and how yours might last as well. So that three to five hours is just to bike the road. It's not to get there and not um, accounting for the road delays um, for the construction. Also, <laughs> well, we wouldn't bike this again without an e-bike, most likely. If we didn't have an e-bike, we definitely, I mean, it's still one of my favorite things to do. It's just, <laughs> it's just a lot more work. So um, either way though. definitely take longer. Yeah. Well, that's why I said three to five hours. I think we took like three and a half and we went as far as we could until the road was closed due to the avalanche that they had yesterday. Was it? it was a couple of days. A couple of days ago. Anyways, they're still plowing. So usually it can only go up to a certain point anyways because of the plots. Just depending on what time of year, what time of the month, whether it's in May or early June until the road is open to cars. Oh, also, we did not see any wildlife today, really, um, but we did bring bear spray. I always bring that. I'd say about 50% of the time when we bike this, we do see a bear, and we did see bear scat today on the road right in the middle, right where probably some bikers were going by. Um, so just it, keep as much distance as you can and just have your bear spray handy on your bike somewhere. And if you don't know how to use bear spray, I did do a tutorial on it. So I will link that at the end of this video as well. Um, or if you just need a refresher.